This is the Amp Hour Podcast, recorded September 23rd, 2013, episode 164, Nonsensical Naming Neolatry. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. Oh, he's changed it. Um, yeah, well, you know, mix it up here and there. I'm getting right. closer. <laughs> it's almost there. <laughs> Dude, you're a machine. I am. You're a video slept. production machine. No word on how the quality of the video is, but yes, I've done. Right, is it? What, so there's no feedback yet? <laughs> no, there's been some. All right, um, okay. But yeah, 75 and? videos. 75 videos. Has, has, oh. Have you actually released 75 videos, or are you you're sort of, you know, caching these things up? Sorry, caching oh. for you US folk. Uh, it's just the beta guys so far, so they've oh, been right, watching okay. them. Right, but, yeah, but, the, but you have actually released 75 videos. Yeah, yeah. Have they actually watched all 75? Are people dropping that off? I'm not what? sure about. I'm not sure. Uh, it seems like it's slowed down a little bit, uh, right. which is understandable. You know, school yeah. started and everything like that, but uh, whatever. Because you use uh, Vimeo, don't you, for the videos? Yeah, I love, I love Vimeo. It's Because it's higher, it's higher quality than YouTube. Higher quality, you can choose to only embed it in certain places, and yep. it just fits. I mean, like, in terms of... If anyone's doing this kind of same thing, we have to, like... Uh, pay for video man video is bandwidth is just insane oh, no. oh it's insane oh no if i probably eventually will do my own video series and yeah i vimeo would be you know yeah. right up there on the list of you know mm-hmm. how people can pay for it and then watch it yeah and and they can download it too they can download yeah, it right, right for future right. watching yeah which you, you have to allow you can't sort of lock it up in some digital content you know management yeah. DRM. I'm gonna wait until the it? end. No. Until yeah, DRM. Uh, I'm gonna wait until the end of the course, but then everyone can download it. So. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Yep. So that's coming. <laughs> I'm just I hyperventilate daily now. It's it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and he's probably uh, a good. month away from divorce, right? <laughs> oh, that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. I bet she's loving uh, it. Uh, she's she's doing. She's been very awesome. So. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, like our audience, right? I mean, like if anyone's worked on a project, you're getting towards the end, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the crunch time's there. And it's just like this at work too, right? I mean, like yeah, uh, of course. I'm getting, you know, I'm stuffed in production. I'm I'm working late. It's just like, you know, you, you have to just kind of hope hope things hold out and <laughs> <laughs> take, them, take them out and treat them right after the fact. Because <laughs> it's, right. I mean, it's just business, yeah. right? I mean, what yeah, are you going to do course. otherwise? It's yeah. like, well, uh, you know... I had all these units in production, but uh, well, I had to be home for dinner. So, <laughs> yeah, and it's like, it's like, yeah, you could try that, but it's just, it's just a, I don't know. Engineering is like that. It's very cyclical. It's, I don't know. Yep, that's tough. Well, I, I have to remind she who must be obeyed to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that that I do actually work for a living. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so working on me too, huh? <laughs> right. just, then everyone just, here, of course. Just because I'm still in my pajamas at 10 a.m. in the morning doesn't mean that I don't work for a living, okay? Right, right, yeah. He <laughs> uh, works hard and, for the money. <laughs> and just because I'm always on call, you know, to rush home right, at yeah. five minutes' notice, you know, right, to yeah, take care is... of something that. You and know. just because you get to travel to, you know, other cities and hang out with nerds and, you know, have fun on camera and be at trade shows and stuff. It's still a job, oh, right, yeah, Dave? Oh, yeah, the whole Melbourne trip, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, exactly. you know, oh, you're having fun without me, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. That's Yeah, that's always <clears throat> tough, too, when you're, like, doing business <clears throat> travel. It's like, because, I mean, like, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, you have this on your your video stuff now, too, but even even regular business travel, it's like yep. you work longer, you're eating dinner with coworkers usually. It's like, okay, well... It's not like you're out clubbing or anything like that. No, you're no, exactly. A certain breed, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Although when I'm overseas on business things, it's like, oh, bugger the co-workers, I'm out of here. You know, as soon as the train... Yeah, going to as soon as the, yes, as, as soon as the stand finishes, I'm gone. Yeah. 
sorry, dudes, but you know, I work with you every day. I don't want to have dinner with you too. Screw that. I'm out of here. I'm I'm in a new city, and I want to see it. Really, you don't take anyone with you. You never, you never like. Uh, hung out no, with no, 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 no. They slow me down. Bugger that. <laughs> no, no, I'm, 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 I'm too fast and efficient. Yeah. No one can possibly. But then you're like you're eating alone and stuff too. You're cool with that. I mean, I don't know. Who cares? It's always tough. Care. I'm, a, no, I'm a lonesome I, person. I'm an engineer. I, you know. I mean, I, I am sometimes, but I mean, I don't know. E- always the eating thing when I'm on travel and stuff. I. I usually like to find people to eat with, at least. It's like I can see the sightseeing thing. It's no, like, oh, I you don't want to go to this museum. I, no, no, eating's just something you have to do to stay alive. No, no it's way, man. Not, yeah, no, nah, sorry. No, you just grab something uh, and keep on going. Ah, uh, see, there's the difference. See, when, I, when I'm when i on business, it's not like I abuse it, but when I'm on business travel, it's like, you know, I'm going to be eating a, a certain <laughs> yeah, amount you eat pretty per well, day right? anyways, right? Yeah, and yeah, it's right. Like, yeah, of course. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to at least explore my options, right? And it's like, right. if if there's any question about it after the fact, it's like, oh, well, you know, what did you do here? Like, like how about this? I'll I'll buy my own beers whenever I'm out on a business travel, right? right? But, uh, but yeah, I mean, of course, you're in business travel. You go, I don't know, find new, yelp it up and, you know, yep. find some new places. <laughs> right. Well, well, there has been exceptions to this when I've, you know, been stuck in in the same city for two weeks, you know, and yeah. I've already seen everything, then it, you know, then it sort of starts to, but no, on the first, usually on the first day, no, I'm out of here. Hmm. Cram it all in. Well, yeah, I guess you, I guess you got to see the world while you can, huh? I exactly. Mean, That's right. Yeah. Might never get back yeah, there. You, you do always yell at me when I don't uh, stick around after the fact, so. <laughs> see, and well, like it happens, you know, you get married, you have kids, like I have, kid. And, you mm-hmm. know, I, I don't want to travel anymore. And, um, yeah, you know, right, you want to be there. Yeah, I mean, how many overseas trips have I turned down? You know, heaps. So, yep. you know, yep, you just never know when you're going to get back. Well, anyway, uh, should we uh, people yeah. bitch that we don't talk about electronics on this show? And we're probably not going to talk right. about <laughs> electronics, but this is huge, dude. Oh, this this is annoying to me. I don't think this is it's, it's huge. annoying. Yeah, it, well, it's huge and annoying. It was huge when it happened. I, I don't the know first when time. it last happened. Like, yeah, the first time. And it was anyway, this nineties for sure. It was yeah, something go like ahead, that. Go ahead, tell them what it is. <laughs> yeah, hang on. No, I'm just trying to remember visualized dates. I can. Yeah, it would have been in the nineties. I'm 90s, sure we can get right? it on the wiki. It was. Yeah. I'm sure we can. Anyway, it was in the nineties. Right, I'm pretty sure it was in the '90s. wasn't in the '80s. wasn't in the 2000s. No, it, must it definitely have been the wasn't 90s. in the '80s. Yeah. '99. Oh wait, uh, yeah, '99. Really? '99. Yeah, that's later there than I go. thought. Yeah. Anyway, the world changed in '99 when Hewlett Packard split up into the computer division, and the bastard computer division got the name Hewlett Packard. So lame. Oh, it was pathetic. <laughs> so it was pathetic. Lame. The whole industry <laughs> yeah. was in uproar, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just oh, crazy. Anyway, now they're doing it again. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't get – I mean, well, I, I kind of get where this is coming from, but they're splitting off the life sciences division from the test and measurement division. Is that right? Right, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I remember. The, I remember reading the two about main it. things in Agilent. You know. Right. I remember reading about it uh, a while back, like probably like four or five years ago. Reading about their their biotech sector and just how it's, it's exploding. And basically, it's the same kind of thing as the computers thing, right? They think, oh well, we have this huge brand name. We can't have this low margin, boring test equipment holding us back. Yeah, right. And, uh, <laughs> oh man. Well, it's apparently just the bean tested, counters and marketers. Yeah. You know. Apparently, the test and measurement division. Someone posted on the forum haven't. I don't expect to make a dividend, or don't expect to pay a dividend. I.e., they're not doing that great. They're not doing really bad, but they're not doing as good as the life sciences division. So, as you say, yeah, you know. Um, Management have gone well. You know, See, we but don't want this the... is so dumb, right? I mean, like it's like okay, so you're not doing as well as you thought you were. Okay, yeah, I get that. But like, whether or not you spin out from one division or another, it's like the same people are still making the same amount of money. I mean, like you know what I mean? Like it's not yeah, like yeah, yeah. they're going to spin out and magically do better. It's like, oh wait, so we're going to spin out this company that's not doing great right well, now? Well, they do. They pay and... more dividend. <laughs> they 
No, I know, yeah. but what I'm saying is they're going to spin out the, the test and measurement company, right? And then mm. they're going to be like, all right, and now we're going to change the name of everything and hope people find us and spend all this <laughs> money on advertising the new name. And it's like, oh, and our costs will obviously go down, right? That that won't cost any money to rebrand and get new <laughs> new stationery no. for everyone and business cards and, you know, <laughs> rebadge everything, change all the databases. All the name plates, every data sheet, every... Every you know, they'll probably pay three million for a new logo or something stupid like that. Yeah, some yeah, they'll pay some boring ass consultant. corporate logo. They've probably oh. got half a dozen consultants working on the new name right now. Oh yeah, my uh, my alma mater went through a rebranding uh, after I left, right? And they were stuck with it. So I went to I went to Case Western Reserve yeah. and they rebranded as Case, and they had this stupid ass logo that just, looked like just Case, well, just Case. Yeah, which right, right. first off killed. All of the alumni donations from the other schools that all combined together. But <laughs> right. aside from that, then they had this logo they paid like a couple million dollars for. Oh. And it looked like someone threw a couple paper clips on a desk and took a picture of it. And it's just like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and that's where my tuition money went. <laughs> see, but it's, see, but it's a dollar for the logo and it's $999,999 for the interpretation of the logo. Oh, screw that. What it that. actually means. You know what? All, <laughs> I, I doubt we have any you know graphic design, artsy-fartsy types listening. And if they are, I'm sorry. But that's such a load of crap, I can't handle it. <laughs> oh, Come boy. on. Like, you could have, you could have literally, your d- logo could be a pile of dog crap. And, you know, <laughs> if you are a good enough company, people are going to associate the pile of dog crap <laughs> with your product. The logo, of course. <laughs> right. Not the best choice, but still, they're going to associate it, right? Like, no one, yeah, yeah. that's what branding is. That's so stupid. I can't oh. stand this crap. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <sighs> it's taken yeah. me freaking, what, 14 years to get over, and I'm still not completely over, get over the <laughs> HP rebrand. I still call them HP. Yep. And now they're going to change again. By the way, those asking, no, we don't know what. They haven't said so yet. I don't know if oh, they're... I, you know. <laughs> I've got what? some guesses. <laughs> right. Go on. Did you, did you see my guesses or no? Uh, I, I have a list. What are your guesses? Were they on the forum? No, I posted them on the Reddit. The oh, right. Okay. Oh, where oh, go right. here? Let's see. Agilent. Okay. And someone else... Uh, who else guessed here too? Uh, K Fitch forty two also guessed. Uh, he, so here's here's K Fitch's uh, redheaded stepchild. <laughs> uh, the the number five seven six four five three four eight six three four. Just like how they <laughs> yeah. name their products. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Inv B four prod, which stands for investors before products. <laughs> and then. <laughs> no. And then some of mine were Bill and Dave's discount test gear, uh, low margin stuff that people actually want, <laughs> GPIB Depot. <laughs> that was my favorite, actually. <laughs> Rigol tube, electron- electronic measurement boogaloo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those who don't get that reference, yeah. it's uh, a, a, a very two. bad 80s. Well, no, oh, the first one was good. pretty good. The first oh, one they was okay. Both pretty good. <laughs> we need to save oh, the, the second one was the community shit, center. <laughs> Breakdance <laughs> two, right? The original movie from two. the eighties was was Breakdance. Yeah. Well, here it was called Breakdance two Electric Boogaloo, right? Because they have oh, different names in different two. country. Yeah, yeah, it was called oh, yeah, Breakdance bre- two. Breaking, Breaking is was here. Breaking two oh, Electric oh, Boogaloo. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. There you go. They yeah they have different <laughs> names for the movies for different markets. But yeah, that that yeah. sucked. The first one was okay. Breakdance. Yeah, when he's like was dance, dancing on the ceiling. I own both yeah. of them, if you didn't know. It's one of, <laughs> one of my favorite out movies. For in that, watch out for a cameo by uh, Jean Cla- uh, Jean-Claude. Oh, yeah. Van he's Dan. in the background dance, yeah, dancing, dancing in a onesie. in his tights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we've just, just totally bl- blowing that this electronic a- show. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, there's tons tights. of... There's ton of there's tons of electronic music in there. It's like all '80s synth pop crap. Oh, it's so good. It's yeah, exactly. ridiculous. Exactly. Adolfo Shabadoo Jones and and uh, Quinone Shrimp Boogaloo. I don't know. As the guys' names. Turbo and Ozone. Ozone and Ozone and yeah. Turbo. <laughs> yeah, it's it's referenced everywhere too. Like you'll see that reference everywhere. I, I'm surprised you're uh, old enough to know I, this. I'm not. It came out the year after I was born. There you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah, I got into it in college. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm glad <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great stuff. All right. 
<laughs> anyway, I was more practical with the name. See, there's yeah, a company, okay. there's a classic Australian, classic old Australian company called B and D, and I thought they should have just bought out there, bought bought oh, them out, yeah. and call it B and D, Bill and Dave, B and D. Yeah. Yep. Yep. See, that's I a damn shame. You know what? Yeah. I I, uh, I am just it, it it was upsetting when I saw this stuff. Yeah. But, uh, Whatever. Oh, oh, they'll come up with some bizarre name, you know. They, yeah. they're, they're probably going through their uh, uh, patent portfolio and all that sort of, you know, trying to find all oh, their trademark portfolio. Because um, that's what Altium did. Yeah. Um, by the way, you know how they came up with the name Altium? It was like, mm-hmm. um, it was originally from IBM. And they. Really? Uh, yeah, Altium bought some technology originally owned by IBM, you know, some routing or some other technology. I don't know. Anyway, or yeah. Altium sold it to someone else and then Altium bought that, you know. And <laughs> yeah, and in the trademark portfolio was this word Altium. And no one knows what it means, but they, they went. I like that, and we'll, we'll just use that. We, we we already own the trademark, you know. And, you know, we could save a lot on a on a trademark naming guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> could save God. millions. You know? What and a waste. And then just pissed away elsewhere. Yeah. Anyway. I know. <clears throat> but oh, I can't. What? You know, like anyway, I can. I probably understand why the life sciences division got it right because they're a. They, we're talking yeah, about a huge. bunch of corporate dickheads, right? And. Yeah. And the TMN, money, 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 the money, test money. and measurement division, right? We're more passionate. People will follow the brand regardless of where they go, right? And right. we'll, you know, a name change won't kill us. We'll be able to recognise them, even though we'll continue to call them Agilent or HP forever, yeah. right? Yeah. But right. we'll at least still follow them. Whereas in the life sciences division, you know, with, yeah. you know, scientists buying this stuff, they just go, oh, you know, I I know that Agilent make the best, you know, lay, you know. Bloody interferometer, yeah. or you know, whatever. Spinny right? thing. <laughs> yeah, spinny thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, so they they may not be able to survive as well with a name change. So mm. I can understand why they kept the name um, from a corporate so. point of view. You know, obviously. I don't but, know. Uh, oh, Who cares? Man. Didn't Who they cares? spin? Out, I always get confused about this too. This Didn't is they spin out deal, an LED, dude. An L- an LED were they Avago or uh, Opto rather? Weren't they Avago? Didn't they Avago spin out of them as well? Um, yes, they did. Or did yeah. they? Yes, yes, they did. Yeah, Wiki it was, to the rescue. Yes, it was the HP. Yeah, it was yeah, the HP right. Optics division or something. Right. Um, right. So I guess it was a little earlier. The uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, this yeah, kind uh, of stuff happens all the time, right? I mean, like oh, of course, Phillips yeah, became yeah. NXP, you know. And oh, there's tons ST of them. was some mashup of other. Yeah, I mean, this stuff yeah, happens yeah. all the time. But yeah, um, in terms of coming out of HP, well, and we had Bob Bob Davidson on the on the show as well, and I forget what I think was his was his hard drive division still around or no? Did they spin out to something else? No, I th- did, thought they spun it. Did out they become him, Seagate they? or something? No, who? No, I don't. I know. don't remember. Oh, it's all too hard. I'll, I'll link yep. in the show at least, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Anyway, I'm what? pissed off. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see a rant video from you about this eventually oh, here. Yeah. And then when yeah. they change the name. So I'll probably do one before they change, before they decide <laughs> on a name and then after they decide on a name and logo. Yeah. Logo's the other right. thing. Right? And, like the HP logo is so, <laughs> like it's clip art stuff, right? It's so similar to like... I've seen like two or three other companies with almost an identical logo. HP's logo? Yeah. Oh no, it's just Agilent's just HP logo. HP in a circle? Oh, no, no, oh, okay. Agilent's logo. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, it's got a name. It's got a fancy name. They call it a Starburst or something, you know, like a... Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because it's yeah, like yeah. a default lo- uh, icon for, yeah, for yeah. <laughs> websites sometimes I've seen yeah, before. Yeah, I think so. And then it's just, yeah, they've just modified it a bit. So... Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, consultant that's got off easy, right? All they had to do was come up with a, <laughs> an explanation, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway, I, it's just so painful. It took us all, you know, like more than a decade to get over this. <laughs> what Dave's really complaining about here, he's like, oh, God, my search engine ranking's going to go in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. You didn't even think about it, did you? You're like, no, oh, No, I didn't. Thanks for that. I'm going to have to go yeah. find every one of my Agilent videos and, <laughs> and put the extra search terms in. Uh, yep. Oh. oh, boy. Oh, that's funny. Oh. oh, this sucks ass, really. It, oh. Yeah. It does. Oh, well. 
Well, speaking <sighs> of uh, former guests like Bob, we should mention. Uh, so we've had two people talk about maybe the economy is coming back. I don't know what's going on here. So we had two people write in about jobs. Yes. To, uh, the amp hour, which is cool, and we highly encourage. Someone told us we should ask people to pay for this. That's a load of crap, though. We just want people, you know, it's great if the, the amp hour community benefits from it. And then, you know, yep. whatever. You guys can buy t-shirts, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so first off is uh, Ryan Brown, who, uh, former guest, he was uh, at, at National Instruments. He actually moved over to Oculus Rift, the uh, the VR company. Yep. Uh, a couple months ago, <clears throat> and they're looking for someone right now. He posted this on the subreddit, and yeah, it's uh, so they're looking for like I think they're looking for um, uh, hardware and mechanical engineers. Yeah, so yeah. like he, you know, Ryan obviously did a lot of FPGA type of stuff, and right. um, if people don't know the system, the it's like a it looks like it looks kind of like a smartphone, like smashed against your face. I actually <laughs> I got to try it. Did I tell you that? Oh no, no. Yeah, I have a coworker Did who has one, who has one of the right. dev kits, and it's actually really simple. Like at least the dev kit version, it's yeah. like it's like looking at like a pretty widescreen cell phone. Yep. And then all they do is they they put a As divider in, in the middle. Wide screens, uh, what just in front of both eyes? There's only the one uh, screen, or there's two separate one. It's only one screen. One... Yeah, yeah, right. it's one screen. And then they yeah. put a plastic divider right up against the screen, so you can't see across. You know, with like with right. peripheral vision. And then they just display on different halves of the screen. They just display oh, different. Oh right! I was going to say, yeah, because you need an image to each eye. Okay, right. Right. So it's, yeah. right, that's it's a cheap. Like, I saw that and I'm like, that's brilliant. Like that is such a well, it a is. Smart... But why? Why didn't they just do a separate screen for each one? It's not any more expensive, really. Well, because of the if you use a stand, I mean, you know this. If you use a standard part, right? It's commoditized. Oh right. Okay. In that case, it's a you know a very commoditized. Oh, so screen, they have actually used inch. like a. They have actually used like a cell phone type or a little mini tablet type thing. Yeah, I think I think they probably prototype with like an iPhone Touch or iPod oh, Touch or right. something like that. Okay, right, got you it, know, and, got it. And uh, and that's brilliant. Yeah, you know, yeah. that kind of using right. using that kind of commercial yep. technology like yep. that is just really smart. And then they're they're creating all of the stuff in the background for you know mm-hmm. splitting out the eyes and everything and putting in yep. the big thing there is obviously a very fast accelerometer because if you just like with Jerry's stuff, Jerry right. was on the show talking about her Castor right. thing. The it's all about the delay because if you turn your head real quick and the screen doesn't move with you, you get super seasick. Yep. You'll just you'll puke right in the mask, even though it's not over your face. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that that'd make a great video. That'd make a viral YouTube video. It's going to happen one day. Somebody's filming someone playing with this thing. Oh, God. Next thing you know, it's this projectile. <laughs> oh God. <coming> at- <laughs> oh man, <laughs> dude, let's do it. It'll make it. Oh, we'll get like a hundred million views. <laughs> we'll be we'll be YouTube YouTube rich, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> one off. So, anyways, but, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so Ryan's looking for that kind of stuff, and uh, and he's so. And the other benefit is you get to work with Ryan and a brilliant FPGA designer and uh, Android aficionado, I believe, as well. I think he's moving into Android type stuff. So, uh, definitely a cool cool opportunity there. Yeah, and. Uh, I don't know, Oculus. Woo. <laughs> of course, we have no experience whatsoever in getting people jobs at uh, virtual reality type gaming companies. Or augmented companies. reality, yeah, depending on your gaming companies reality in general. Companies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> we stopped all of Valve. It's been a while, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Dear. Now, now we're going to uh, staff all of uh, Oculus, Oculus Rift. Yeah. Or there you go. Oculus. Yeah. Oculus. The Rift is the device, right? Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. uh, the other See, one is yeah. was posted on the uh, forum though, on the EV yep. blog forum. Robert. For a, uh, I mean, we're hitting all we're hitting all the keywords here, right? So the uh, oh yeah, quad. It's a quadcopter Y combinator startup. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, they're looking for <laughs> electrical engineers and and layout type stuff. So yep, cool stuff all around. You know, if you guys want to, it's all California though. I mean, that's kind of the that's the thing. Oh yeah, that, there's there's the hub. You know. Yeah, I guess it is the hub there. I mean, that's uh, you know, that's where a lot of the jobs are, especially the startup kind of things. The Y Combinator stuff is obviously all out there. Like we talked to the upfront yeah, guys last week. Yeah, you've got to go week. there. Yep, that's right. right. They they came they down from Canada. They you to go out there and hang out yep. with the other nerds. Yeah, I always <laughs> wonder what that would be. I mean, like you know, I I wonder about that actually. So in the in the comment section from last week, someone was writing about that and just kind of promoting the idea of joining a startup at some point just for the experience of it. You know, good or bad. You know, if it doesn't work out, the, the entire startup. Uh, and it was it was it was a very nice nice post. I mean, about uh, about 
joining startups and why it's exciting and stuff. So, oh recommend. yeah, but then you end up with, you know, all these just failed startups everywhere. It's like a you know rite of passage. Oh, you got to fail in a startup. I think that's just dumb. I guess so. I I don't know. I don't no? look at no. It's, and and then you get people just doing startups because they think they have to do one. Yeah. Right. And then all this money's being wasted and whatnot, and you know, and um, yeah, well, a we lot know how you feel about money that. Being wasted. <laughs> oh, I think, I know, think if you look just... at it, but you got to look at it like that. No matter what what company you're going to, right? You can go to an established company hmm. that I don't know moves to China, and it's all about <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all about what I mean. I the same happened to me, right? I mean the. It's all about what you work on there, though, and, and how you develop as a person. That's all that really matters, I think. I mean, like, sure, you want to work on something. Everyone wants to work on something that becomes, you know, a, a big thing, but it doesn't it's not going to happen just statistically. So I think well, you got to focus on the, the interesting things you got to do there and the problems you got to solve. That's, that's the interesting stuff to me. Well, you just get to, uh, you know, often there's a lot of uh, young kids who go, oh, I don't know what I'm interested in, but I want to do a startup. You know, oh, it's, I just you know, facepalm every time I hear that. Facepalm, is that just... a new startup? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, trademark it, trademark yeah, so... it, get a patent portfolio, you know. <laughs> I, I need a logo. Quick, I need a logo. <laughs> we need to rebrand. <laughs> and they end up just brainstorming and working on something that they're not, they don't really give a shit about and something that's, you know, compromised or something just because, you know, yeah. Just because they're working on a startup, and it's like, well, I do I, agree. I mean, you, you should I work mention... on stuff that you care about. You know, that that's very yeah, important. yeah, exactly. That's number one. And uh, like, I did an interview. I did a Skype interview with um, these um, guys in um, Sydney. These uh, students in Sydney. Did I tell you about this? Uh, I don't think so. Oh right. Anyway, they uh, they wanted to interview me because they're doing a class at the University of New South Wales. I think it was, uh-huh. and uh, uh, which is my state. If you didn't, know. of course. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Oh, there you go. Um, d- anyway, yeah, um, they've got this course, right? It's, you know, a, a, well, class, right? It's part of their engineering degree or, or whatever. And, uh, and yeah, it's like startups, you know, how to entrepreneurialism and all that sort of jazz, you know, which mm-hmm. they never had when I started, you know, but now apparently, <laughs> well, you know, <clears throat> yeah. everyone goes through five different entrepreneurial classes, you know, and wonder why we have this sort of culture today. Anyway. What you need to um, do is yeah. everyone needs to be different. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now write this down, and folks. The, <laughs> and it was just all cookie cutter business shit. And mm. I explained to them, like, they, you know, and they, they're asking me all these questions, which obviously came directly out of their textbook or course notes. And they're mm. like, so, <laughs> so why did you decide to do the EEV blog? And like, <laughs> and, and, and then they were absolutely shocked when I said, oh, I just did it as a hobby. And they like, and they were stunned that, you know, I didn't have, um, you know, like I didn't have a plan and I, like a business plan and I didn't do it as like, it's like, no, I just, just did it because I enjoyed it. It was, it was a hobby thing and it turned in, you know, and, and they were absolutely was actually, shocked it was, and they went. It was an entry point to try and, you know, meet some awesome person from the States and you know, start, a, start a radio Ohio, show, of yeah. course, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Go back and tell them the truth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, and and they actually, and in the end, I went, yeah. And that, like every answer I've given you is probably totally different to what they told you in class. And they went, yep, it is. You know? <laughs> like, to- oh, yeah. yeah. It's, well, it's always oh, man, the, that's I- always the problem with with classes and stuff too, right? I mean, like, I mean, even even I was reading about professors today, right? And it's just like yep. you know, and how professorships are becoming very scarce in general and just the state of teaching and stuff like that and how but right. professors will still teach you tell you oh of course you should become a professor i'm one i love it and it's like that's terrible advice for people these days you know <laughs> the education right. market is shifting completely different directions right but it's like well it's going to be like who's teaching you as well right so it's yeah, it's yeah. just yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> oh. anyway i thought it was sad that they were you know that uh, they just, you know, didn't that the teacher wasn't instilling in them. Just do find something that you love and just do it, and and don't give a shit about anything else. Well, right? don't give you a know? shit about well, money is the, is the main thing there, right? I mean, that's that's the main thing yeah. at first, right? Well, I mean, a lot of people go in, they say startups, oh, money, money, right? And that's like, well, yeah, may, yeah, yeah. maybe you know, you'll raise money. Yeah. I mean, like. Like, like, look at the Upfitter guys last week, right? They're still, they're three years in. They're still trying mm-hmm. to find a revenue model. Like, that is not uncommon. 
and and I tell you what, they're not going to cash yeah. out with any with any big paychecks without a revenue model, and they know that too, you know. Like, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's like well, yeah, no, they might. They might they get might. bought out. You if know? they bought I mean, out, right? That's, I would say that's yeah. a revenue model, to be honest. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, right. That's and it's, selling you know, and they probably right? spend three weeks trying to, you know, learn. Oh, what's your exit strategy going to be? Oh, holy, yeah. you know. And they're asking me, you know, what's my exit strategy? Like, <laughs> for God's sake, you know. Well, either my wife says one. I can't do it anymore, or I kill over <laughs> dead. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or my camera breaks uh, and I can't get it repaired. Uh, right, and I can't make any more. <laughs> Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm. tough, man. There was another uh, article I was reading about uh about just like our my I don't know if you'd be in generation Y or whatever. Um but you know, kind of like talking it was very viral this week about about just like wanting to advance too quickly and you know, wanting to, you know, caring about and like being told they can do anything and follow your passions mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. It's like but it's always it's just a balance point, right? It's like you can't be like, oh yeah, follow your passion. You know, like you want to become a, you know, uh, a Scottish uh, historian ballerina <laughs> okay, okay go ahead yeah you'll make tons of money doing that you can definitely it's like, right. but if you want to do that as a hobby of course yeah follow your passion there right and then maybe maybe it'll become a thing you know it's like yeah. there's always balance points there and it's like anytime you're learning absolutes you're going to be screwed so uh, at least people care about well, electronics the, right <laughs> well that's half the problem with the industry and we talked about it well no a problem with the um uh, study you know engineering is just one example where you know you get you know i i use the example that 99 percent of the people i studied with didn't give a shit yeah about engineering they were doing it for some other reason you know yeah i think i think i was in that group to be honest i mean i think i I think it's different these days i think it's it's probably a lot different these days i don't think so i i don't know i I, I mean when i I was in school it was kind of uh Post dot com bubble. Obviously, I didn't go into web stuff, but that was that yeah. Was a but big you you did all too. this post. You did all this post communications revolution, right? Post yeah, internet. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, right. Whereas I did it pre. Yeah, so that's true. you know, it's kind of it's kind of different. That is true, but yep. I think we're. I mean, we're. I don't know. I think the the fact that the hobby stuff's coming back is or is back. Come on, let's be honest here. <laughs> it's, it's like, I think yeah, we can call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We can call it. So yeah, it's, <laughs> right. It's a good thing. Obviously, we wouldn't uh, be here otherwise. <laughs> right. Well, we would. It would just be uh, us talking to each other and, you know, not right. much else. <laughs> Next topic, because yeah. we always talk about this shit. Yeah. On every uh, show. What was on the list? Where's the list? There's the list. Hello, list. Oh, It's a uh, big list. Well, since we're talking about money, uh, <laughs> to completely switch gears... Um, yeah, Design News came out with their salary survey this year, or for the year. Right. And, um, you know, it's pretty standard, you know, salary survey and everything like that. Uh-huh. Um, the thing that was interesting to me about it, though, let's see if I can pull it up here. It, of course, of course, you can't just get to it. You have to register and, you know, oh. so people are worried about that kind of thing. But the, uh, I, I really did, I, more than other years, maybe they've done this in past years, but they plotted... They plotted salary against a couple different interesting things. One was, you know, like how long you've been at the job. But one they actually show right. in the article here too is like job satisfaction. So like extremely satisfied people are uh, paid the most, and then the least satisfied. Yeah, because they're the least. extremely satisfied. <laughs> no, well, it makes you, it, it just makes you wonder, wonder though, like <laughs> which way does it go? Is it correlation or causation? Right? Is it they feel right. very yeah, satisfied because yeah, yeah. they're getting paid a lot, or are they doing really well and they're satisfied in their job, and that just makes them advance more? Right? It's like right, right, yeah, yeah. It's That's interesting. almost interesting. impossible to get data on that because you of have course, to. Yeah, it, well, it's yeah, you, it's, it's you'll have to and, interview the bosses and ask them why that they're paying them more. Right. You know, exactly. it's like it's just data that's not available. Right. So. Yeah, and there was a couple other uh, comparisons in there as well that were interesting to me. The uh, it was salary against well, obviously location, right? We were talking about California before. Uh, California that always, was the highest, of course. They always skew stuff. Yeah. Uh, Midwest is the lowest. Uh, that was fun to find out. Uh, right. <laughs> yay! Uh, <laughs> but that just skews the average up, right? Because at least we're not Detroit. At least we're not Detroit. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> we always have to bring that back every couple of I met someone shows. from Detroit the other day and they hadn't ever yeah, seen that yeah. before 
Oh, and, really? And yeah. Like, were they pissed or were they? No, were they, they were just like they were just confused. Laughing. They were just confused. <laughs> right. You know, huh, um, what? I don't see anything wrong with Detroit. Right. No. right. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I guess you wouldn't if you still got a job, right? Right, and yeah, I mean. Detroit uh, right. industry is, I mean, like car stuff is doing great right now. You know, like that. Well, uh, that's the thing. If you've got a job, you're going to go, what recession? What global financial crisis, right? You know? Right. It's, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. And that's another thing that they were showing here. They they showed like, uh, you know, more people are, you know, and, and just good trends in general. More people are are getting jobs. More people are getting raises, that kind of stuff. So that's uh, that's all good. Th- I, right. I mean, it, it again, with, with the way that our industry, or our audience is, right? It's like, we we've got a couple we've got some people who are professionals some people who are hobbyists some people who are students so it's kind of across the board but i know that when i was coming out of school at least looking at this kind of data too was was really difficult right because first off i was in ohio and so it's like mm-hmm. i expect you know like i look at like the starting salaries of like averages and you do that across the, the states at least and it's like oh i should be getting paid 90 grand when it's like no sorry buddy you're in cleveland <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so uh and, and no one no one is quicker to point that out than a uh, hiring department either <laughs> right <laughs> so uh yeah yeah so it's just it's Andy. an interesting thing if people want to check out that right. and they claim with martin those with masters or phd earn the highest average salary of 115,000 well that what's the average for Non- that was that was interesting too. Postgraduate, it, was, it wasn't much below it. It was like I, I it was going like, to say it wasn't much, right? So how, like you know, how how much does it cost to get a PhD these days, right? A buttload in 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 the US, right? A buttload, isn't it? Uh, no, a PhDs are buttload of money. At least in engineering, uh, PhDs are normally uh, have stipends and stuff like that. So usually, oh, right. PhDs okay. won't right. be necessarily. Um, charged for because usually you're you're working you're teaching you're doing research that kind of thing you're paid oh, very right poorly. okay right you're yeah, right <laughs> yeah but you're um, earning something right yeah, yeah yeah you're earning like a right. stipend um usually sometimes master's stip in, programs we call it here yeah okay you, yeah stip in sorry okay you you do that <laughs> uh, <laughs> i will you Thank do you very much. all right uh yeah but the you know like master's programs around here and i don't have i don't have a master's i don't know i, I never planned to really get one um uh, I'd rather get to school of hard knocks kind of stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it. So yeah. they, but yeah, so they're saying, you know, yeah, it's not much more, right? So right, yeah, it, it was a very gentle yeah. slope between the the different degrees. So like, yeah. it was like one fifteen for PhDs, and I'm I'm doing from memory here because it won't open for me right now. Uh, but I think it was right. like one oh eight for masters and like one oh two for bachelors. You know, mm. so like and. In, Somebody yeah. asked that on the forum the other day. Somebody came in and, you know, it happens all the time. You know, it happens yeah, regularly once every couple of months. You know, oh, should I do my master's or PhD because, uh, you know, will it earn me more money? And, you know, you know, all hell breaks loose on the forum. You know? <laughs> Pandemonium. <laughs> dogs living with that's cats. Total cats, insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I oh, mean, boy. the reason the standard response is you go get a PhD if you if you want to work in research, very specifically research, and you want and you don't you don't mind spending a couple years to do that, doing that, and and getting really deep on a topic. And the thing about yep. PhD stuff too is like you're you're very often dependent on who your your PI is or your your uh, advisor. You know, you're going to be working on mostly what they're working on. Um, you know, so yep. pick pick your yep. advisors wisely. That's so that's it might the main be boring as batshit. You know, it might, well, it might not be. be something you care about. You know, right? But definitely choose that from the beginning. You have to know that going in, or else you know it's not like you're going to be like, no, of eh, course, two yeah, years yeah. in, this doesn't seem like what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You pretty much yeah. know up front what what you're going to yeah, be doing. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it's tough too. I mean, I've seen people you know leave. So like PhDs can leave with a master's degree. And that's like, you oh, know, yeah, even if, yeah, you're, yeah, it happens. if you're doing yeah. it for like six years, you know, you're still like, oh, well, I got a master's degree now. It took me six yeah. years to get it, but yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's not a reason not to do anyway. it. It's just a matter of how much how much you value the, the research over maybe development type stuff, right? You know, so yep. in research and development, you're going to have one or the other. And uh, <laughs> I, I do mostly development. Question, right question with this survey is is it electronic specific or is it just engineering in quote marks yeah that is that is another which i hate one. uh it is it is a little more engineering it's it's um it seemed like the, the top ones were 
electrical, mechanical, and then like manufacturing right. type oh, stuff. Oh, they do so, break them down. Okay. Yeah, right. they do break them down, but they don't break them down by you know like high level stuff. So really, the best yeah. thing would be yeah. to get the data set if you could, but whatever. I'm what sure we're that's... saying is these salary surveys are bloody useless <laughs> in all practice, yeah. right? No, it's, it's just, interesting to see. They're full of shit. They're, it's interesting, but don't put any stock in it. Seriously, right. don't think, oh, I'm. they're only paying me $80,000, i am a graduate, and this survey said I should be earning 90000 Right, a, exactly. You know, yeah, if you walk into your boss's bullshit. office with this thing, or anything thing, from like Glassdoor it... or Salary.com <laughs> right. or any of the PayScale.com, right, yeah, yeah. you know, like they're, you're yeah. just going to get laughed at. It's like, okay, well, exactly. you want this? Well, what have you done for me lately? You know, like yeah, you got to yeah, walk yeah, into your right. boss's office with, I designed this last year. This is earning us three million dollars this year. I feel like I did, you know, I I did a great job. Our support requests are 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 low. I did, you know, like I'm designing the next generation of stuff. And if you want to hold so on to can me, can I please have a new multimeter? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Because <laughs> it may come down to that. You know, that's my, that that might be all you get, folks. The best in you do. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. the best you're gonna do. So be careful. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was that was another thing from the no. survey that was interesting was the, uh, you know, people or. Are our engineers getting replaced when they reti- when engineers retire? Are they getting replaced? And it was a you know a, not a, a huge amount, but a significant portion were not still. So um, you know that's right. that's what I keep wondering about. I don't know if you watch the stock market at all, but I keep watching the stock market, and and you know it's like going gangbusters I right now. I don't watch it anymore. Right. Yeah, and, well, it, I, know, I, I know. just wonder about it Give from it like I wonder if if engineers that are getting up there in age, you know, like maybe they're near sixty, sixty five kind of thing. It's like well. Yeah, you don't want to, you know, you, maybe you like your job, but maybe you also want to retire, you know, work part time kind of thing. It's like, I just wonder how that's going to affect retire, engineering. Well, if you retire in one of those lulls, you know, when the share market's low, you're you're screwed. Right. Well, yeah, at least well, you yeah, are they, here because all about, you know, most people's superannuation is tied up in shares. I yeah. don't know how the system works in the U.S., but poorly. It's generally how <laughs> right poorly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Why am I not surprised? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> oh, I hear horror stories. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. News. News. You got I'm. Else? I'm. It. I'm interviewed in a new book. Makers <laughs> at work. Dave news. Oh, thank goodness we yeah, got well, our update. You know, <laughs> Uh, this We've just already in, done folks. industry news out here. You know, uh, Agile and splitting up. You know? And now something else about Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I've this got news brief toes, brought to you, you by know? Dave. <laughs> sponsored by the EV blog. <laughs> I'll be paying myself to sponsor the show. Oh my god. Um, uh, yeah. So what's this book? Yeah. It's a uh, makers, makers book? at work. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, it's a book about they, makers. It's a, do they know a you book don't of work? interviews. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. It's a book. Uh, they interviewed makers. Um, it was a oh, phone, cool. uh, the Skypey, you know, interview. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, people in there. You know, Nathan Seidel, Jerry Ellsworth, all the usual players, you know. Yeah. They're except, all there. Except they so, actually come to the States sometimes, yeah. Or live here, whatever. Oh, right. Well, yeah. or yeah. they live there, yeah. yeah Almost right. all of them live there. I may be the only international one. I don't uh I don't International know. man of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you know, it's got Eben Upton, uh, what else we got? Uh, Ward Cunningham, uh, Sylvia Todd, Bree Pettis, Ben Heck, Becky Stern. Yeah, it's ah, all the usuals. Massimo Banzi, there you go. There you go. Someone from our Ian Ian Lesnett, you know, Bunny. Well, Long, he lives overseas now. There. Yeah, it's, well, it's yeah, Lene. He's, he's it's a Lene, right. if you remember. Oh, Were you on the show sorry. when he was here? No. Yes. Yeah, no. Uh, probably. I think so. Okay. Sorry, and Len Lane is there, and you know. Uh, of course. Yeah. Anyway, um, Stephen Osborne's a guy who um, wrote it, and it's a uh, basically an interview format. Uh, cool. Book. No, no pitches. Sorry, people. Um, <laughs> no pitches? What do you mean? Like startup pitches? No. No, well, there's no pitches of the people. Oh, pictures. Know? I think you said pitches. Pitches. Oh, right. No, no. Sorry. Pitchers. Pitches. <laughs> like the picture show. Yeah. Pictures. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Got it. Oh, <clears throat> man. Speaking yep. of pretty, pretty pictures, did you see this board from uh, Boldport? So, um, no. Do you, know, do you know what Boldport is? Or. No, so, Sar is the <laughs> so so he's the one who did no. the. Uh, this is another one on the. It's on the list as well. Uh, we we talked about it once before. He he did a board with the uh, 
the Bob piece, the only my favorite programming language is solder. The the PCB that looks like it's hand drawn, right. like a hand oh, yeah, cut, right. cut kind of thing. Yep. Uh, so he did this board for his buddy for his his buddy's wedding, and and so so Boldport is the is the software, and it's all it's all Python based, and then it, it cranks out SVGs. And we talked about it before because you, and you said oh it's it's not good. it's only single layer and everything like that. But I swear this this is just a gorgeous gorgeous board he uh so he he basically panelized it and then he 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 made the entire panel assemblable using only parts from the panel and then Mm -hmm. it also had leds in the back as well with a little uh i think an at tiny or something like that to actually control it and so basically it's just like this light up piece of art and just how he he did the uh i forget what he called them like whisper lines or something like that i forget what they're called (laughs) but it's in it's in the copper uh, layer on the top where basically it looks like solid copper if you're just looking at it and then when you shine light behind it it actually shines through the copper like just lines in the copper right. it is unbelievable Sweet. yeah so the bold port stuff still scares the crap out of me because uh you know it's all python and programming based but this is it's just it's gorgeous i don't know like <laughs> if this Hang is what's on, to come look, i've called up the photo called up okay. the photo yeah, you got to see it lit up oh, too. Oh right! Oh yeah, right. Like the Ooh, the photo at the at the mid oh, midpoint. Oh, lit up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's really intense. Wow. So. Jeez, th- that's a work of art. It really is, and so obviously we can't talk about it too much on the show here. You know, people have got to go see it, but well, you know, yeah, like it's not a just visual even medium. If, if you take nothing else from this other than like tips on how to do like light, like just the lighting type stuff, like the backlight stuff. Yeah. You know, with with the solder mesh relief and everything, and the um, solder mesh relief around around the copper, and as is obviously gold plated as well, probably enig. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it's just gorgeous. And I, I was telling them online too, like you know, he's better just get ready for the pick Kickstarter because people are gonna keep asking about it, right? I mean, like I know exactly. This, it's just awesome. So yeah, people should That's definitely go check it out. <laughs> it's and like it's you know it's got like I think it might have music associated with it too and everything. Yeah. So well, it's not the first time I've lit up um, through FR four material from yeah. behind. Yeah. You know, but yeah, this is like it looks funky because it's got multicolored RGB LEDs yeah. and little right, right, symbols right. of cars and you know like yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all personalized and everything and. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. very, very yes. Cool. It's actually a work of art. You've got to be artistic to do this, right? Know? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Well, it's which like, oh, I lack all talent to do. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, first, you know, it's it's it's, it's trivial. Just putting some copper on there, remove the solder. You know, it's not hard. See, but the, the but lines. Do you see those little lines in there? I didn't know how to do those. Mm-hmm. The uh, if you if you zoom in yep. on uh, what is the yeah, picture? Yeah, I can here? see them inside the actual letters. In inside yeah. the letters. So there's so there's life, letters on here that say the life thing is that the says game. Life is the game. Yeah. Life life is the game, yeah. Right. And then but if you look at the close up of it, there's like little etched mm. lines inside the copper. And I don't Yes, I don't... where they've actually removed the copper. So it's mostly copper fill. Yeah. It's so would it be the copper, copper fill, layer then got... that would be just without without that space filled in then? Like just really thin lines? I don't know, man. Oh uh, yeah. So cool. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're, no, I, we're right. done with uh, Dave and Chris Art History Hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, boy. No, that's that's gold. Yeah. No pun intended. So, I I, I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to have to open up Boldport at some point here, but uh, it scares me. I don't know. Code's still... Like, that, like, code doesn't scare me on an everyday basis, but just, like, the idea of, like, projects that are totally like that. Like, I'll, you know, I've been doing github and stuff like that and you know i'll do command line i do command line stuff i do all linux for the the amp hour server but i don't know something right. about it just i need to man oh, up. this is a y combinator thing which is says he's just he's just applied for y combinator oh well applying is different than being oh, there. right okay. you have to, everyone has, right. if you if people are interested in, you have to of apply course. first and then they say okay yes yeah, and then yeah. yeah and then they'll give right. you money and whatever got it God, I wish I had some artistic talent. I have none. <laughs> well, your rulers. What about your rulers? Those are are those all shipped yet? Are those all out in the, no, out in the world? No, they're not. 
No, but they're not artistic. That's just oh, you, you got, know, yeah, you know. <laughs> it's not artistic. No, no. Well, you can't. Uh, no. I guess you can't uh, no. make a new logo for Agilent then either, or whatever they are. B and D. B and D. B and D. I love it. Yeah. Unbelievable. Ah. <sighs> what kind of Ray uh, Dolby passed away? That's pretty sad. Yeah, he was. He was a badass dude. He. Uh, <laughs> he, he did a lot of, I mean, like all, all of the, the noise reduction stuff. And then I'm always still amazed at what they were working on outside of the noise reduction as well. Is it Dolby? I think it was Dolby. Maybe it was Bose. I'll just shut all up right. about that. Maybe <laughs> I always get those two confused. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bose is no, nothing to do with that. Bose is a. Yeah, there's speaker stuff. Or yeah. there's, they're audio. I yeah, mean, they're, both they're, audio. they're a cheap ass, you know, they're cheap ass speaker manufacturers claiming that they can do you know magic yeah with little and uh yeah oh this is uh, this is huge industry news which we haven't talked about what's that the uh the the kosh brothers are buying molex molex yeah. the huge connector company like the world's probably the world's biggest Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, definitely one of the biggest. I mean, connector company, I'm sure, right? They make connectors for everything, right? They're yeah, buying people them know, for $7 like, billion. A- ATX connectors, like you think of power supplies on computers, stuff like that. That's that's mm. a Molex connector. That's a Minifit Junior. Yeah, uh, like Molex are like the industry. St- when you talk talk about a type of connector, Molex almost certainly were the first to make it, you know? Yeah. Usually. And yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, I don't know about that, know. that, but. <laughs> anyway, anyway, they're huge. And these Kosh brothers are apparently, uh, yeah, the world's dodgiest businessmen. And, mm. uh, and uh, yeah, um, there's, there's a doco on them, which I haven't watched, like exposing their corporate behavior or something, how they, I don't know. It's mm. something. Anyway, and they tried something. to have the movie shut down and, you know, the exposing yeah. them and all sorts of shit. Anyway, they're buying Molex. So, uh, yeah, goodbye, Molex. I don't know um, if that's going to really matter, though. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I yeah, think about big well. holding companies buying other big companies, you know, like. Yeah, like it's a Danaher type, you know. It's yeah, not going to be a well, Danaher kith, kiss of death, is it? Well, I don't know. Like, mm. some, it depends on the company who buys them, right? I mean, that that's kind of what it comes right. down to. If it's like they're going to come in and. And I, I personally, like you think about Molex connectors, like they're pretty dirt cheap to start with. So, <laughs> oh well, no, they're not. I've paid hundreds no? of dollars for a Molex connector. Really? Oh, well, no, th- they make I some of the, of the highest obscure connectors in the industry. The highest quality. Uh, obscure I don't. Connectors I don't use them for that industry. stuff. I mean, I think of oh, them right, for well, like right. generic. You know, like yeah, right. You know, jelly the, bean, the, the jelly USB bean connector crimped. Well, I think like you right. know, single wire, a little 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 right, old crimping. lady sitting there right. at the the Molex crimping machine, <laughs> you know, kachunk kachunk kachunk, little foot controller, <laughs> you know, right, put the yeah, wire yeah, in, yeah. kachunk kachunk kachunk, and it just it just does it has the, <laughs> right. the mold and it crimps around the wire, and then someone else is putting wires into plastic headers. That's what I think of. That's actually one of my first when jobs. You're... I was I had to learn how to do that kind of stuff because when I didn't have anything else to do, I had to go worked the Molex machine and I got in tons of trouble. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. And those things will take your fingers off if you're not careful. No, I see, you know, when I think of, like I'll think of the DIN four one six one two. DIN four one six one two, huh? Dude, come on, VME. I don't know it's what you're saying. Standard right VME now. connector. You know? What industry? I mean come on man, you can't blame <laughs> me for not knowing different <laughs> in, in, industries. Industrial computer industry. Okay. Fair DIN enough. DIN four one oh there we go. I know DIN <laughs> oh okay, yeah, Din, like it's the ninety a, it's pin. A stand, yeah, yeah. Was that yeah, them yeah. who did that though? I thought that was someone it's else. It's a cartridge. Yeah, I know the cartridge. No, I'm sure, stuff. it was Molex who made the first one. Oh, okay. Now every yeah, man I know Din, dog makes it because Din stands for uh, Deutsch Deutschland yeah. Industrial and something the, the number. Whatever the N is, yeah, like know. standard oh, yeah, or yeah. number, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I knew it was German, yep. and that's where Din comes mumble, from. Mumble, mumble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I know yeah, D is it's one of these things that they. I think they started off with a connector and then they ratified it as a standard, right? You know, which is brilliant. Uh, I, I could be wrong <laughs> on my history there. I yeah. might be talking out my ass, but no, yep. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> we don't do that here. Uh, of course not. Yeah. Anyway, that's pretty huge. So yeah, yeah. Well, it might be. We'll see. Mm. Din connectors aren't expensive though. Dins are cheap. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Dins are pretty cheap. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, Molex can that. make some very, you know, expensive connectors. 
if yes. you go to the right niche industries. You know? I think, but anyone can make you know expensive connect. Everybody, oh, that's what they always yeah. do, right? Everyone starts like yep. that. They, you know, there's all there's there's a hundred thousand companies in Shenzhen, China, right now making <laughs> yeah, yeah. this exact same connector, and all of them dream to make make the best the the next level of connector, right? That's right. that's how of you course. start. Yeah, it's yeah. just. You start at the low end and you move up. It's the innovator's dilemma, right? Every time. Every single time. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That's. I guess that's news. I don't know. Like, no, it's eh. news. Come on. That's huge. You know, Molex or... You know, yeah, I get... I mean, like, it's... The, I, the like, bread and butter of the... I think about all this stuff, right? I mean, like, so, like, this is interesting to us, right? I mean, but... Yeah. Does it actually affect us? I mean, like like this Intel thing no, too, probably right? Probably not. Nothing happens, right? Right. I mean, like these no. these the new Intel chips HP too, right? HP matters. They don't, it matters. doesn't matter, Dave. You're gonna figure out the new name. You're it gonna complain matters. about it for Shut a bit. Up. You're you're gonna complain about it for a bit, and then you're gonna be like, "Yo, oh, I'll keep buying it, I guess." <laughs> oh, they gave me a scope to review. I guess I'll review it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, that's just how it goes, right? I mean, like, parts of electronics are very steady state. I mean, like, just the fact that, I mean, like, DigiKey and Mauser exist, right? The fact that you can have Mm. these huge supply chains where you have, you know, billions of parts in the pipeline that you can just go and buy. Like, the fact that you don't have to buy anything custom. The fact that there's standard numbers. It's insane. The fact that there's, well, there's less of this these days, but, you know, like, like, cross-reference parts and and uh pin compatible components like that is just a function of how many electronic pieces are in the world because otherwise they wouldn't do it because there's there wouldn't be money in it exactly speaking of that yeah no money in it segue back and back to back to uh agilent right somebody on the forum yeah no come on this is important somebody um uh, said well does that mean agilent are going to stop making their high-end gear you know, like doing their high end, you know, basic research on, you know, eighty gigahertz front ends and they're mm. gonna stop making that. And the answer I believe is no. In fact, if anything, they're gonna stop trying to target the low end because they can't compete at the low end. Because yeah, Rigol and, and all the others are just gonna kill them. Right? So they have to almost sort of, you know, continue to focus on that, you know, sort I guess of high so. end stuff they yeah they but have then you to, like that's get down where the big margins are. two customers who need gigahertz scopes you know what i mean like it's like yeah but there's big margins in there which do pay for the r&d you know? i guess so, so but you if know? you lose people then you know what happens is well, someone who yeah, has yeah. they have a yeah. agilent scope on their bench right and then they shop mm-hmm. around they see agilent is no longer focusing on on low to mid-end scopes and then they they ignore it for a little while they buy someone else's and then they come back and the name is changed <laughs> and they can't figure out what the hell is going on. Take that, Agilent. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah. No, I think I think you're right. I, I don't think they'll stop doing that stuff. It's just of course I won't. Hopefully, you know the thing you hope about with that stuff is that you know if you have a CEO because if it's just a test and measurement company then and you have a CEO who's focused on test and measurement then yeah okay he cares about test and measurement he or she a, cares about it you know yeah what well, could become a better company who knows well, we could get who yeah, cares we could get better test who we cares have no, I went better we test have, we have no decision in this process <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, goodness goodness, yeah. goodness 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 I wanted to talk about uh so it was weird because no one really talked. Well, I saw it here and there. So yeah, it seemed like everybody was talking about it. On you know, in like it seemed like it was very forced. Like uh, the like the press release like was parroted a whole bunch. But I was actually excited about this thing. Uh, the the TI the new TI part. Did you see that thing? Uh, you talking about the inductive one? Yeah, the LDC thing, which is a stupid name, but whatever. <laughs> I've already got one. You do have one, yeah. So I I've, I've got- uh, I've got one in my hands. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I, I got yeah. one, I got one at work. Just as I think they were handing these things out like candy. It's pretty cool though, right? Oh, I mean, right. like okay, yeah. Oh, well, I, mean, I haven't actually tried it yet. Okay, haven't, haven't tried it. Yeah, demo's pretty. It, I mean, it just it, turned up yesterday. You know. Oh, okay, okay. So I mean, so basically, what it is, it's it, I mean, it's 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 nothing new. That's that's the interesting thing about it. It's nothing new. And in fact, our buddy Alan Alan Yates does uh, did a great video uh, with the same kind of concepts. Um, that was he, in in inductive power transfer. 
Uh, that's not the one I was talking he's, about, he's, actually. But oh, okay, All right. Yeah, he, I, I think he did right. another one about that. Uh, the one I was talking about was where he had he had a coil with a resonant uh, oscillator, or he was sorry, it was, it was a resonant coil rather. So just the the coil inductance and then uh, a capacitor out there, and probably an oscillator as well. It was um, a tank circuit, yeah. Yeah, tank circuit. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and then basically, though, it was it was it was the coil was big enough that he dropped different core materials through it right so like he put different mm-hmm. uh ferrites through it and different materials and then he played the tone and then you could hear the tone change based on the um the inductance changing from the, yeah, yeah. the core material changing right and basically that's what this is i mean that's like it's a metal detector you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah so that's i mean so maybe that's why no one's interested in it but i think you know in in terms of standardizing it right and and, and having it so that it is it's just a drop, a drop it in. It's it's effectively just a sensor chip now. That that well, was interesting. What it to me. is? Explain what it is. Is that it's actually a distance measuring chip, so you can get the distance from a metal object. Yeah, and and fingers too. I mean, like you can actually just get regular any kind of material. Well. You oh know. right, okay. I, haven't I tried mean, if you that. get close enough, okay. it's it's yeah, it'll do non metals as well. But uh, that's just because the coil's changing, really. Yeah, and and basically though, they're talking about doing it, you know, like using it in weird, you know, weird applications like like putting it underneath oh, a bed course. bed yeah. spring and monitoring your and uh, your breathing and stuff like that, which I thought was interesting, or like non contact switches, which is probably the dev kit you have, where they actually show you that the the they have like metal. A slider, right? So it's a non-contact kind of thing. You can just detect right. how much metal is over top of it. But it's, it's like pretty sensitive too. I mean, all in all, it's 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 an interesting concept, and you know, obviously it's not a new concept, but it's an interesting concept. And that interesting... they've integrated it into a chip so that you can more easily do it. Right. And here's whereas here's... before you had to sort of roll your own solution. Exactly. And here's here's my point though. What's going to happen? So I'm basically calling this a new. Sense, sensor class even though it, i mean it's not like new but it, it because it's it's standardized into a chip you know you can drop it in mm-hmm. it's a new sensor chip to me what we're gonna see and if we don't you know some of the listeners on the show might want to do it is we're gonna just see kickstarter projects where you have a sensor yeah, yeah, chip new sensor chip comes out <laughs> you bolt on a bluetooth some novel chip application to it, yeah you hook it up to an app yeah. and then basically you have a sensor hub for something else right like that is just going to yeah. be the trend we see over and over and over again and yeah. so what i'm saying is people should watch for i mean like when i saw this news i was excited because of that i knew that the the sensor chip coming out is going to inspire <laughs> same here yeah it's just going to be a bunch of these that, little that's new why gadgets I got one to play with it and i went oh what idea can i come up with? exactly you know, right yeah come that's up with, I mean, yeah that's that's kind of the, what if people watch data sheet uh, announcements and stuff like that that's what you look for you look for mm-hmm. something novel and different and a new type of yep. technology or measurement kind of thing and i think it's going to end up spawning a bunch of kickstarters and you know integrating like mm-hmm. and how easy is it now to like throw it into a quadcopter, right? I mean, obviously, it would have to be pretty big if <laughs> you right. are approaching Earth. <laughs> <laughs> you approached Earth two seconds ago. <laughs> oh, but, uh, you know, and so different, yeah, different yeah. applications like that, but just drop the, the dropping in kind of thing is what was what really is interesting about it. So, right. uh, yeah, you're welcome, T.I. Someone who actually knows <laughs> what we're talking about, you know, aside from my <laughs> little tank snafu there. <laughs> so is this... Chip of the week. Oh, chip, 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 chip of the week. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I like it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have a play with it. It's it's yeah, it's fun. I got one. I mean, yeah, they, it's only like twenty. The dev kit's like twenty bucks or something, and they ship it for free. You know, even even to me here in Australia, they FedEx to me for twenty seven dollars or something. Yeah, that is a nice. Yeah, that is a nice trend. I, know. I have to say, I hope yeah. that continues. Like T and you know, I are doing this for everything. It's brilliant. I mean, like, I how know. are they not? We it's talked great. about that on the show, right? It's like stop spending your money on stupid marketing stuff, like Maya Bialik talking about zombies on YouTube. Do you see that crap? Exactly. Oh, Holy that crap! Sh- shit. Oh, it was terrible. You know, it was the calculator division, which in in TI probably has a lot of money sitting around anyways because they yeah, you know yeah. make a five dollar calculator oh, and yeah. charge one hundred fifty for it. Not throwing a cash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but still, that was so annoying when I saw that stuff. I could not be- like what Just, they're, they're talking uh, about. Mayim Balik from the from the Big Bang Theory. They got her 
Right. Well, and she's a neuroscientist to too. Starring she's, this. Yeah, oh, she's yeah, a yeah, professor. She's a, you know, yeah. like nothing against yeah. that, but like, good god. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, they're a talking lot about of money zombies. was thrown down that shithole. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah, just sell. You know, exactly. Uh, you uh, spend uh, your marketing uh, money giving away cheap kits. Subsidize is the word. Subsidize Exa- the kits. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. not cheap. Yeah, right. Exactly. Cheap is the wrong word. No. Subsidize. Yeah, uh, yeah, you have to cover your base costs, you know. But right. Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, yeah you and if you give stuff. The, the, the other thing, too, is if you give away dev kits for free. Right, everyone's going to sign up for one, and then no one will use it. You know, like yeah, I think, yeah. I think that's right. So it stops the tire kickers. But if you make it twenty, thirty bucks, you know, it stops the tire kickers, but it gets the genuinely interested. Yeah. Right. Or most. I, th- of I them. think I think that was part of the problem with like the launch pad. I mean, like five was it four thirty because it was MSP four thirty on there. It's four dollars thirty. That was almost free. Almost free, right. And I think free yep. shipping, too. And then you know, yep. kind of the same thing with Raspberry Pi too, where it was like everybody saw it as a computer. You know, for thirty bucks, it's like, of course, I'm getting that, right? Or like this, and uh, everyone bought them, and they sold a million of them. But how many people have actually used it? Exactly, Not, exactly. You know, yeah. Well, and we'll it's like this new uh, 3D printer on Kickstarter you talked about. That. Uh, oh yeah, let's talk about that, shall we? <laughs> we're hitting them all. We're getting all our bases <laughs> today, folks. <laughs> yeah, we're we getting are, them folks. Oh, this is a pot puree of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. So anyway, you, you posted yeah. about this, or someone on your forum did. Yeah, I yeah somebody on the forum, and then I tweeted it, and my first gut reaction was, uh, yeah, like this guy's thinking outside the box, right? We'll talk about it in a second, uh, the, what, what he's actually doing. Uh, yeah, love it, thinking outside the box of how to design a new 3D printer. Is you're doing some novel stuff in it, but in practice, it's just not going to work. It's going to be a pile of shit. I'm sure of it. That's my gut instinct. That was everyone else's gut instinct, really. <laughs> and, um, you know, and... It's just, it's going to be a useless toy. It's a $100 3D printer. And, and of course, they've already met their target, right? And you're going to have a whole millions of, well, not millions, but you're going to have tens of thousands of these nerds. Oh, it's a 3D printer for 100 bucks. I'm going to buy that. And they're just throwing their 100 bucks down the drain yeah. on a toy that's just going to be impractical, I think. So, yeah. yeah, it might print something, but it's just, oh, it's there's so many issues with it. I don't even want to go there. Oh. <laughs> well, we should name that. It's called the Peachy, right? I mean, that's the, the name of it. Yep. Um, yeah, and it's uh, interesting, too. It's uh, it's Canadian Kickstarter, so that's just started a yep. couple, uh, I think it was a year ago, right? Now Australia has Kickstarter, too. Um, uh, they're about to, yeah. They're think. about to, yep. right. Uh the thing that's interesting about so first off, I like that you know it was developed with this hackerspace. That was cool. Single founder. Um, the thing that's interesting to me about it is that he said he developed his own light. Uh, what was it like the 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 mirror circuit or not? Wasn't a circuit, but it was yeah, like yeah. It uses a mirror to bounce a laser. By the way, this is not a deposition. Uh, de- right. Yeah. It's a, it's a uh, SLA uh, type uh, technology. F- FDM. It's a laser sintering. A selective. Yeah. Right. Whatever SLA is. <laughs> Whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, the goop. It needs the goop. Uh, but <laughs> but basically, so he and he and and the interesting thing from the video is he said, "I'm saving money by not having analog to digital converter. So instead, I'm using the audio output port from the computer and then the microphone <laughs> yeah. as feedback." I think he said. Oh, I don't know, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So so two like, things are interesting about that. One is that he said he developed the the actual mirror himself which you know that i think that by alone should be applauded because you know developing your own sensors or developing your own interface device like that that it's a that's... mirror on a piece of string you know it's a yeah yeah but i think it was like laser cut and, or something and, like that and, but and then they have a coil to move it you know it's... yeah right but yeah. that's but that's interesting from a you know because that's the kind of technology where you can develop that more right whereas you're not dependent on you know like a like like the uh, Form One, which is yeah, another 3D printer, you, uses Blu-ray oh. disc stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I just I think that's interesting from a, from a manufacturing perspective and stuff. There's a lot of of efficiencies you can get from that. It might be limiting eventually. Yes, but. there is, but but generally you're probably going to have like really do it yourself, <laughs> cruddy stuff like he's doing, or you're going to have to put massive. Well, you just raised two hundred fifty thousand dollars so far. <laughs> well, yeah, but but have you seen the size of his team he's got? No, working no. on this thing. I don't know if they're full time. Yeah, like he lists all these people that are working on. There's like more than half oh, a I dozen that or was something, the hack start, and or the one of them's a marketing person. 
Yeah. One of them's a marketing person, right? Yeah, it may be at the at the hacker space, but if they're working on it, it full time, they're gonna ble- you know, they they just gotta hemorrhage cash. Yeah, you know? maybe. So well, the, I, yeah. the other anyway. thing that was interesting to me is that the the fact that he's coming, they're, they're coming out of the audio port on a a computer and then using yeah. the microphone port. It doesn't tell me that they wanted to save money on analog to digital converters or DACs or anything like that because those are pretty cheap. Uh, it tells me that they're software people. That's what I mean. Like that's the kind of thing that right, that tells right. me right yeah, there. Yeah. Um, which right. is okay too. I mean, that's an interesting. It's a like, and like you said, it's an interesting outside the box kind of solution, which Thinking. alone yeah, is very. It's very cool. I mean, well, that's we haven't great. talked about the Z axis yet. Oh right? yeah, here's that, a that more, is here's cool. an even novel thing, right? The Z axis. Yeah. No, there's no stepper motors in this thing, right? It's just right. a little box which you stick above the solution. Right. You know, you just hold it there, and it uses the mirror to burn. And the way they raise the thing up in the Z axis is yeah. to put salt water into a top reservoir, and then it drips. The salt water drips down to the bottom reservoir, which then lifts the liquid up, uh, the uh, the resin, because the resin floats on top right, of Right, so it's a real thin layer of resin, water. too. It's a density, yeah, it's a density thing, you know, so they're mm-hmm. using physics, so it's really quite novel there. And then they're counting the number of drops that go in to yeah. determine their Z height, and it's like... Right, and that's and that's the microphone <laughs> yeah, thing, I forgot. Like that's a, what they're using the microphone oh, for. Oh, you know, right, okay, for the sensor for that. And yeah. it's like, yeah, A for out-of-the-box thinking, but is it going to work in practice? Practice? Oh, it's just going to be <laughs> I think at this point, who awful. cares? I think that's going to be, right. that's interesting well, by itself. Well, that, that's the thing, right? This is, it, it's just a toy. It's not going to be a workable 3D Yeah, printer. Yeah, but you know what? It's interesting. I think it's interesting from a, you know, a development standpoint too from, like, that is so, that is so different oh, to, to me at least. It's like, a, that, that might drive well, other people to do different stuff, right? Oh, of or course. develop oh, more no, expensive no, no, versions. No. For, for, that's where I see its value being in just, you know, people dicking around with this sort of technology. And yeah. it's a dick around kit. It is not a 3D printer to produce anything <laughs> practical with, right? It just, you know. Or a dev kit. We'll yeah. call it a dev kit to maybe make it a little, <laughs> right. a little smoother there, Dave, right? It kind of rolls no, off the tongue. No, no, it's a dick and around kit. No, no. Okay. It, it's a dick kit. A dick kit, okay, dick. yeah. Yeah. Don't search for that on Google. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you'll probably get a Dick Smith kit. You'll oh, probably, sure. You know, yeah, maybe in same, Australia, buddy. Famous Australian Dick Smith kit, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh. Oh dear. <clears throat> yep. All anyway, right. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So, so we're on the same page. So we both agree yeah. there that it's not really going to produce a practical three D printer. Really. Yeah. Well, and you know, and yeah. There's always. I mean, there. I think there's still value in you know the toy side of things, right? I mean, like, like well, our our friend Maybe. Jerry, right? She worked in the toy industry. There, there is still interesting stuff there. You know, from learning about how to do low cost design, how to be innovative with you know working with what you have there. That. That is just um, it's interesting, right? You'll you'll find efficiencies yeah. and then you can roll that out to, to bigger designs later. So So uh, get working on your farting novelty toy or your <laughs> or your spanko meter. Well, I think I think this has a little more value than that, but okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, yeah. Um great for out of the box thinking, but blah, 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 blah. Mm, yeah. 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 Um, no. So we should probably rapid fire some links and get the hell out of here, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, probably. So I think we're going way over. I signed up for a power electronics course. I don't think I've mentioned on the show yet, but uh, Coursera actually has a a power electronics yeah. course yeah. on DC to DC converters and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, taught and you signed up and you watched it. Uh, it hasn't yeah. started yet, so right. it's it's actually like you can actually get credit and everything if you do the homeworks. Which yeah, yeah. I will not be doing. I'll be making my own course. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, this is free, right? It's yeah, subsidized free. by the University of Whoop de Doop. Yeah. Don't ask me how the hell that's going to all work out, but whatever. Mm. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, <laughs> FDA is removing some roadblocks uh, for apps and stuff like that. So we might see, you know, talking about dropping in sensors into uh, smartphone type apps real quickly and having little gadgets to touch smartphones. You know, if you can do that in medical applications, that's really big, right? Whereas currently FDA stuff is crazy. Right. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got to go there. Yeah. And I called it, of course, Australia is now rooted. Um, oh, yeah. In my uh, election rant video, I said that Australia would be rooted, and it didn't take long. It only took a week. Uh, yeah. The new Australian government has um, axed our science minister. We no longer have a minister for science. Oh. The last time this country didn't have a minister for science was 1930, folks. Yikes. 
and they axed all sorts of other ministers, minister for youth services, the woman, women's minister. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and and as a, as a rub it in your face, guess who appointed himself women's minister? Our prime minister, who is known as one of the biggest misogynists in the country. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, screw you. Anyway, mm, yeah. I called it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're, we're screwed for the next three years until we can boot the bastards out. <laughs> At least we're not Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Australia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, man. Oh, I, I'm so embarrassed. I'm I know, so embarrassed. you should be. You're basically like the Deep uh, South now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, next thing uh, you know, it'll be creationism. In, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, you're screwed. Yeah. Uh, other things. Oh, Alan's video on... Uh, uh, Antenna matching was very cool. I, I like that a lot for for low cost antenna matching. That was a cool video. Oh, I haven't seen it. You're talking yeah. Gates? Yeah. Uh, no, Alan uh, Wolke. And, oh, uh, Alan Wolke. Right. Yeah. Right. And then on the same subject of ham, we had a visitor from uh, Hackaday, Mike's. Oh, I can't say his last name. I I learned it at once. But Mike, one of the editors at Hackaday, dropped by to let us know about a uh, article from Bill Mira, actually, the Solder Smoke podcast, one of our favorite other pod- podcasts, who wrote a uh, an article called. Why ham radio is a hacker's paradise, and it's very link heavy. Right. So, yes, cool, good stuff. Uh, check them all out. Next week, speaking of things that shake around as signals, we will be having <laughs> oh Hen- yeah Henry Ott, the preeminent preeminent is that the right word? The ex- one of the world's yes. leading experts yes. on EMC. 30-year veteran of Bell Labs, uh, wrote the textbook on... on I've got it right here in front of me. I have it in my hands. Yep. Noise Reduction Techniques in Electronic Systems, if, second if, edition. If you've seen it, you know what it looks like. It's got, like, really blocky graphics and everything like that. It's Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but it's yeah. very distinct, and it's very good. So uh, please, yeah. please get your questions in for him. If you've got any kind of questions about noise reduction, EMC reduction... He is the one to talk about. He's so he's still touring, doing courses and stuff too. And even though about, he's yeah, how old talk, is he? Talk he's about not his... retiring. I think he's uh, seventy plus. So uh, yeah, I'm very excited about this. So really, can't wait for that. And we got some other good interviews lined up for the following weeks as well. Awesome. awesome. One last thing, we will be selling more T-shirts. He was born in. Hang on, he was born in 1936. There you go. It's inside the book. 36. 70. Yep, well, so that makes him in his mid-70s or something. Yep. No, yep. more than that. 80-something. Does he have a gray beard? Uh, I think he is clean-shaven, so... He, he doesn't need one. He's moved beyond the gray beard, Dave. That's <laughs> right. how good he is. That's how good <laughs> <Right>. he is. <laughs> uh, he's, but yes. he's, he's, he's gone from Gandalf the gray to Gandalf the white. Is yes. that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. All yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. Oh now. boy! Uh, <clears throat> yes, t-shirts. We will be selling t-shirts. We'll probably kick off another Teespring campaign. This is going to be a white t-shirt. Uh, we are going to have uh, ladies' sizes as well. So uh, uh, for our five percent of our audience, and also you know if you want to, if uh, our male audience want to buy Amp Hour t-shirts for their One lady for friends their as well, partner. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, Definitely get in on that if you're interested. If you missed it last time, this is going to be another nice looking T-shirt. So it's the same logo though. It's exactly yes, the same design. Same logo, different Just... colors: white shirt, black logo, yeah. black and blue logo. It's it'll look nice. Sweet. All right. Uh, anything else, Dave? No, that's it. We're way over time. Oh yeah, yeah we are. <laughs> yeah, because we screwed up in the middle. We had the blue screen of death. Oh, you didn't. You're not supposed to tell him, Dave. I the, tweeted it for goodness sake. The illusion sake. is People ruined. Know? No one pays attention to your Twitter. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you next uh, week, man. Bye. Bye.